I mean, the Lord, the Lord said, he, and the reason I said the Cowboys, because that's one, I love sports. And I don't, well, I don't love them anymore. I like them now. They, I, don't, I don't love them. But, but the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, I could miss a game. And if my wife had something to say during the Cowboys, it's like, babe, you're going to have to wait. I know, but the Cowboys are on. If the Spirit of the Lord, honestly, I would have been that person to say, God, I'm going to give you seven hours afterwards. But right now, there's eight minutes left in the game. They might win. I'm going to give you my life right after this. That's an idol. It doesn't seem that big. And so there's things in our life as, as, you, as you begin to have a repentant heart and say, Father, Lord, I just yield to you. I have, Lord, I, I repent, Father. I want, I want you to be number one, Father. Lord, I, I, nothing will take precedence over you. I don't want to miss this latter rain. I don't want to miss this outpouring. I want to be a forerunner. I want to be right in the middle of what you're doing, God. I want to be, whenever you move, I want to know what's coming. I want to be right there uh, one step ahead, Father. But for that to happen, we've got to turn. The scripture says, turn from your wicked ways, repent. We've heard that before. And God said, I'll heal your land. But repentance comes before the refreshing, always. And so, and like I said, it's not asking forgiveness. That's totally a different. That's a lie of Satan to say that repentance is asking forgiveness. Because asking forgiveness, you, it's, you don't change. You just say, oh, God, for the 400th time, I messed up that, in that area one more time. Lord, forgive me. Oh, two days later, I messed up. No, repentance says you turn from that and walk the other way. It is now a thing of the past. Forgiveness is something that is a prerequisite to repentance. So tonight, I just want to encourage you guys that we are about to walk into the greatest move of the glory of God that the world has ever seen, and God chose you. He saw all the souls of eternity whenever he was putting people in their place and creating us. And he said, okay, Moses is going to go. I've chosen him for this. I've chosen him for this. All right, now i got Lindsay and Craig and Brent and Jason. Now them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they're my special ones. They, they have what it takes in the last days to be the forerunners to my second coming. This is the most glorious time in all of history, and God has chosen us to live in it. That means God saw something in you that he didn't see in anyone else. And he said, every one of us has a calling. Every one of us, even where you're working right now, you are on the front lines. You've got a destiny right where you're at now. So let's make it a point tonight to, to have a repentant heart and say, God, I will not miss this, Lord. Let's get rid of the idols. Let's, let's get on our face before God and say, Father, show us what we should say, what we should do. And I want to end with this scripture. It says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And that's James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. So see how the farmer, and that farmer represents Christ, waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Who's that? Us. The children of God. He waits patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Until. We've seen the early rain, but we haven't seen the latter rain. And he's waiting for the fruit of the earth to receive the latter rain before he can reap his harvest. All right, everyone bow your heads. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, tonight we recognize, Father, Father, the word that you've spoken. Father, we recognize that you are wanting to do something as such as never before seen in the earth, Father. And we're humbled, Lord God, that you've chosen us, Father, to live in these days, to be a part of this move, Father. And so tonight we make a decision that the things of our life that have separated us from you, that have come first place, Father, that have got us off course, Lord God, whether they're a sin or whether they're not even evil in their own selves, but we have a wrong relationship with them, Lord God. Tonight we make a decision, Father, to repent, to turn away from those things and follow you with everything we've got, Father. Lord, I pray under the sound of my voice that every person hearing me pray, will not miss this move, Father, but they will be involved, Father, in this outpouring, Lord God, that they would have a strategic plan and mission individually for their life that you've called them to, that they will fulfill before the second coming and the last coming of your son, Jesus. And so tonight, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm not going to ask you to come up to the front tonight, but I'm going to ask you this. As you examine your own life and your own heart, Even as I was speaking tonight, I spoke of idols. I spoke of things that have separated us from God, that have hindered us. Things that we know that we need to repent of. Not just ask forgiveness, but turn once and for all and for good from those things and follow after Christ with everything we've got. The scripture says, follow hard after him. And I know as I was saying that thing and and saying some of the things the Lord has shown me in my life, you saw some things in your life. And so I'm asking you, if there's an area of your life, and I'm not saying it has to necessarily be a sin, 
It could be a wrong relationship or a fear or a worry or something that has come before your relationship with God. And it could be a sin in your life. Anything. That would be an idol in your life. And tonight you say, you know what? I'm tired of wasting time. I'm not going to delay the coming of the Lord any longer. I'm going to be a part of that glorious church without spot or wrinkle. I'm not playing around anymore. I'm serious about God. In these last days, I will partake of this glory. And I will be an expression of God's glory in the earth. And you see those things in your life and you're like, you know what? It's over with. I'm not ashamed of it. And like I said, it's not a, it doesn't necessarily have to be a gross sin, but it could be anything in your life. I want you to stand up right where you are. And let me tell you this. If I was an audience, I would have stood up before anybody else. And you say, you know what? Tonight, I'm recognizing these things and I know that, you know what? At this very moment, all these things don't just rush out of my life. It's a decision I have to make and say, you know what, God? I'm not going to let sleep come in my way. I'm not going to, when it's 530 in the morning and you wake me up and say, I want you to fall on your knees and pray in the spirit for the lost and dying world, that you're not going to say, you know what? Sleep is not on my life. Or my own desires or ambitions or things that have gotten in the way of the Lord. So as you're standing, I want you to raise your hands to heaven and just agree in prayer with me as we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for the honesty of the children of God in this place tonight. Lord, we recognize, Father, that these are serious times, Lord God. Lord, that these are times, Lord, that you have chosen for the elect, Father, for us, Lord, to shine as lights in the earth, Father, to be the salt of the earth, to be a fire that burns brightly, that all that can see would lodge under it, and that those that are cold and in darkness could come near us and be warm and have light, Father. These are times to get serious, Lord God. And as we raise our hands, we acknowledge, Father, that the things in our life that might be hindering us or stopping us from walking like Peter did in the full knowledge of the glory of the Lord, everywhere we go, we cast those idols out of our life right now. Just as Asa did, we burn them down. We kick them down. We say no longer will Satan have rule in our life. No longer will the fears of this world or the distractions of the age have precedence in our life. But tonight, Father, we make a decisive decision and dedication to you, Father, that we will now run after you as hard as we possibly can. And we will not enter eternity walking or sleeping or stuttering, Father, but we will enter eternity sprinting, Lord God, running with everything we've got, Lord. Lord, I thank you that Heritage of Faith Christian Center will be one of those lights that is, this will be the church that will begin the repentance, Father. Lord, that as the body of Christ comes into corporate repentance, Father, and we come back to the heart of worship, Lord God, back to the heart of the gospel, back to the heart of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Heritage of Faith will be a forerunner in that, Father. That we will acknowledge, Father, and humble ourselves first and say, Father, we repent, Lord. And tonight is a turning point in this church in Jesus' name. And we thank you for exposing that, Father. We thank you for the purity now that's coming, the holiness, the sanctification in this church. And we thank you that every time we assemble from this point forward, there'll be a different atmosphere, Father. Because no longer will we carry our idols in with us. No longer will we carry the distractions of the age. But we come in pure with hearts of worship, Father. No longer in the pride of selfish ambition, Father, but in humility, Father, and in love for one another. Lord, and we thank you for it. We thank you for your word tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.